looks badly damaged. Dissect it. Now that we're off that Dajaric board of a planet, I say we burn sky until we see lines. Do you know why we have called you here? As Revan summoned you, so have you come full circle to return to the Jedi. Why did you defy us? The Jedi are guardians of the peace, and have been for centuries. This call to war undermines all that we have worked for. Is Revan your master now? Or is it the horror you wrought at Malachor that has caused you to see the truth at last? to hear us, you have shut us out, and so have shut yourself to the galaxy. We feel that your true understanding of what happened at Malachor V will only happen in time, and it cannot happen here. 
longer the battlegrounds where you fought. You are exiled, and you are a Jedi no longer. There is one last thing. Your lightsaber. Surrender it to us. Much defiance in that one. You were correct, Kavar. When she was here, I felt it. It was as if she was not there. More like an echo. Revan's influence has grown amongst the youngest of the Order. He speaks to their passions, not their sense. The war has touched them. Many of them have found themselves in the war against the Mandalorians. It is as I feared. And I fear that we have played into the hands of the enemy. We have not lost a Jedi this day. You felt it. She has lost herself. She is no Jedi. She walked Revan's path, but she was not strong enough. I fear it is our teachings that may have led Revan to choose the path he did. We are not the ones who taught him. We take responsibility, Atris, not cast blame. The choice of one was the choice of us all. Revan's teacher intended no harm, and Revan had many teachers since. Yet they all stem from the same source. Her teachings violated the Jedi Code and lead all who listen to the Dark Side, as they did the Exile. You are wrong. The Dark Side is not what I sensed in the Exile. Surely the rest of you felt it as well. That emptiness we felt. She has changed. Whatever that wound was, it was of the Dark Side. We should not have let her depart. She will simply join Revan again, or perhaps worse. What would you have done with her, Atris? Be mindful of your feelings. This is not Revan who stood before you. This one walks a different path. No, although that may come in time. We let her go because we must. Where she travels, she carries her destination with her. Malachor V should have been her grave. You saw it in her walk, and in the Force. It was as if she was already dead. No, not death. Many battles remain for that one, if what we have seen is true. But the future is a shifting thing, and she cuts like a blade through it. We should have told her the truth. A Jedi deserved to know. No good would have come from it, even if what you believe was true. There is still the matter of Revan, and such truths could leave us vulnerable on two fronts. Perhaps in many years we will call her before us and explain what happened to her, and how she may be healed. Until then, she must accept her journey. But she may never discover the truth, and she will never know why we cast her out. And that is the future we must accept. Those Jedi sure like their secrets, don't they? some larger planet work here, and we are walking into it. This is too convenient to be anything but a trap. General, is there a reason you don't carry a lightsaber anymore? That's not your lightsaber anymore. That belonged to someone who served Revan in the wars, not the person you are now. You could build another one, if you wanted to, but you know that. I never said you were, but whatever the reason, you should put it behind you. I know this. A lightsaber is part of who you are. Without it, you're not complete. I think I can help you out there. I happen to know the parts you need. We need power cell, emitter matrix, lens and focusing crystal, though I have to admit the crystal is beyond my means, never did understand them. Those parts are fairly common, though a Jedi once told me that it's best if your lightsaber reflects you, and if it is constructed of things that identify it as your own. 
Just bring the parts to me before you get started building it. I'll make sure they're usable. For the last time, no. Because you're programmed to force your opponent to go first, and nothing will convince me the computer doesn't cheat. Even if I didn't have to go first and somehow I didn't suspect you of counting cards, I still wouldn't play with a trash compactor. Yeah? How many credits? All I'm saying is that you've gone for a long time without a memory wipe. Most droids behave erratically under those circumstances. I know that, but I'm fixing everything else around here, so I may as well take a look at you, too. What was that? That's what I'm talking about. That is not normal droid behavior. I am not pushing you around. I just wanted to see if there was anything I could do to upgrade your functionality. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Good. Now let's get started. You wouldn't guess it from the outside, but it looks like you've been through a lot. I'll bet. I'm all done with you. If anything comes loose, let me know and I'll put it back in place. I didn't want to talk about the war, but can I ask you something? Why did you decide to fight? I felt the same way. I remembered when word of the Mandalorian attacks arrived on Iridonia. My people had colonies across the Outer Rim. Many of them were among the first systems to fall. I did not join because I wanted to protect them. I hated them. I wanted to destroy them. To give them the mercy they gave the people they conquered. I remember the thrill I felt when we fought them in battle. Victories were rare, but we celebrated every Mandalorian's death. Do you know how it felt? I couldn't do that. It was almost as though the battle took control of me, drove me forward. It's always on my mind now. That loss of control blinded me, turned me into a weapon. I just needed to get that off my chest. Was there something you wanted me for? That old thing? I built him when I was a kid. Been following me around for years now, despite what I've done to try and chase him off. Hey, just kidding. I'm happy to have you around. He helps me out with repairs. I outfitted him with a cutting laser and some other tools for delicate modifications. He's also good for singeing the pants of annoying techs. I've been thinking about doing some other work on him, but I barely have time. Too busy fixing up the ship. Something else I can help you with? Just working on the ship. I'm not sure who got her up and running, but I'm amazed she's even space-worthy. Whoever made these repairs doesn't think like most mechanics. But don't worry, I'll get everything in shape. Yes, General? Sorry, General, I'm flat out. I'll see if I can make some more when I get a chance. Something else I can help you with? Let me see what you have. No, you're still missing any emitter matrix and lens. Something else I can help you with?
You have been with us since Terrace. Without you, we would never have escaped that place. And for that, I thank you. I'm leaving this message inside you because I have seen glimpses of the future. And the bond that he and I share does not allow him to hide everything from me. More of his memories have returned, and they trouble him. He has remembered something. Something on the edge of the galaxy. And he believes that he must go there to end it. But I am afraid for him. Afraid that he may not return. I need you to be the beacon, T3. If he is lost out there, on the edge of the galaxy, if he finds whatever terrible thing he has seen, then he may not survive. If he doesn't make it back, then I need you to return to the Republic. Find help. If you cannot find me, then seek out other Jedi. The Republic... I can't lose him, even if he believes he is protecting me. Come with questions. Ask, and I will answer. There is nothing wrong with my sight, if that is your question. I see all that I need, though the seeing of things flesh and blood has failed me some time ago. They were distractions only. There is nothing wrong with my eyes. They simply have atrophied from use. They are adequate to distinguish shapes. Silhouettes. If need be, I could heal them, restore my sight. But sight can prove a distraction. When one relies on sight to perceive the world, it is like trying to stare at the galaxy through a crack in the door. But that is a lesson for another time. You must learn to see crude matter for what it is before the veil is lifted. 
Ask, and I will answer. Does it matter? Of course it does. Such titles allow you to break the galaxy into light and dark, categorize it. Perhaps I am neither, and I hold both as what they are, pieces of a whole. Know that I am your teacher, and that is enough. What do you wish to hear? That I once believed in the Code of the Jedi? That I felt the call of the Sith? That perhaps once I held the galaxy by its throat? That for every good work that I did, I brought equal harm upon the galaxy? That perhaps what the greatest of the Sith Lords knew of evil they learned from me? What would it matter now? There is only so much comfort in knowing such things, and it is not who I am now. Learn from me, my mistakes, and use that knowledge to become greater than I. That is all I ask of you, and that is all I desire. In you all my hopes rest for the future, for the Force. If it means so much to you, then this I swear to you upon my life, upon our lives, that when your training is complete, I will answer everything. There shall be no more shadows between us, only truth that exists between master and apprentice. Ask, and I will answer. I know her as much as I know any Jedi. If you have other questions, you may ask those, but on Atris, I can provide you no answers that you cannot find on your own. Ask. Something up? All right. Huh? What are you talking about? Oh, that. Don't tell anyone, but you wouldn't believe how many fights you can prevent by just pretending to know that stuff. I mean, it doesn't compare to wearing a lightsaber, but then again, that doesn't seem to help you much. Yeah, so what? I don't ask any dumb questions about your past, despite the fact that it keeps throwing us into life-threatening situations. Wanna know why? I figure if you ever want to tell me something, you will. So give me the same respect, all right? Well, hey, thanks. But you've got the wrong guy. I'm good at shooting people, cracking wise, and pretending to know how to fight with my hands. All right, what did you want to know? Unnecessary observation. Targets acquired. Annoying recitation. Let us proceed to facilitate communications. Recitation. And bring about the termination of hostilities. Optimal accuracy ratio achieved. Cool.
So you've returned. While I was disturbed that you chose to defy our orders and obtain transport off Citadel Station, the matter has since been closed. It was the decision of Republic authorities that your testimony would no longer be necessary, and thus you'd be allowed to go. But as we discovered, you had already left. In some ways, it was lucky for us, avoiding a possibly embarrassing situation. Why does the Republic do anything? The head doesn't know what the feet are doing. The hands don't even know they've got fingers, let alone where they are. My opinion, they probably performed their independent investigation and figured it wasn't your fault. Anyways, you should just be glad I decided to overlook the fact you escaped arrest. Yeah, yeah. And if there's nothing else, I've got a job to do. What is it? I see. And where and when did you kill them? I see. Well, you certainly earned the bounty on those two dangerous criminals. Here it is. I think you'll find the amount more than adequate. The TSF once again thanks you for your cooperation. Good to see you again. Have you already heard about Zerka's operations on Telos? I would hope so. I simply do not have time for you. My hands are full with trying to manage the restoration project without the aid of a droid intelligence, which you so kindly gifted to the Athorians. If there is nothing else, I'm glad that Zerka put a capable woman in charge of the project. I've got every faith.
check it again. It can't be anything else. Just check the damn connector. I don't trust the diagnostics any more than I trust you. Because I don't like droids. They break. In the head. Well, whatever you call that thing on your head. Yeah, well, if I'm mean to you, it's because I care. Betrayal. Machines. That passion for such things defies me.